Hello everyone, Bob Smitty here. This is my update video. Um, I, I know I already did the Ghostbusters review. I was trying to get that out of the way so I can get to this, which I just finally got to today on Tuesday. So yeah, about the stuff that happened. Uh, I don't mean to sound negative. I try to be a positive guy, but I don't know if mission trips are for me. You know, I, I've been doing it the past three years, once a year, and this year, my third year for the mission trip, I actually had two, uh, one month apart. And the second one... Okay, let me start at the beginning. Okay, so July 11th, we get there, right? This time we have air mattresses. This is, this is actually with an organization that organizes these mission trips. So there's people from several different churches all over the southeast. And we have to share a room. Now, I didn't mind sharing the room too much. And like I said, the air mattresses were actually good for my back because I, I kind of have lower back problems. So we get there, and the first day, you don't really work. You don't go out and do the mission stuff. It's just an orientation. They just tell you, okay, you're going to do all this stuff. You're going to be with this group. And, and they assign me to a roofing construction crew. You know, high up. I don't have a fear of heights. I just... <laughs> eh. Well, I, I might kind of. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I've been in high places before and it hasn't really scared me. I thought it was kind of cool. But when you're working on a roof, not a flat roof, the roofs are like this. And those old shingles that they put on roofs back in the day, they have granules in them. And granules you can easily slip on. So before we got the shingles off with little specialized shovels or hammers or whatever, it, you can slip on those very easily. So there's about, the first day we worked on the Tuesday, uh, there's three different times I nearly slipped and fell to my death from a 15 foot high roof. Actually, it wouldn't have been death, it would have been like hospitalization for a period of time, which would not have been fun. Thankfully, no one on this mission trip fell off a roof. <laughs> That's a good thing. One kid got popped in the back of the head on a construction project that was, you know, on the ground, but that's because some, some other kid was not watching what he was doing, and the chunk of wood flew out and knocked him in the back of the head. She's fine, though. The child is fine. And there was all this paperwork, all this, this stuff we had to remember, and I'm just thinking, you know, this is way too much information. That We're only, we're only going to be here for like five days doing all this work. So Tuesday through Friday was our four main work days. Uh, Tuesday, the first day, we were on this house that had like so many Okay, I'm gonna say triangles because I don't know what the official term is, but this house, you know, it had like one major triangle in the middle, then it had two triangles jutting out, and then a couple going the other way. There's actually a flat area, but a small square area on the top of the roof. This house was, this roof was crazy because, you know, there's like awnings and windows everywhere, and it wasn't that big, but it was a lot of work. I mean, we were helping another crew, so there's like nine or 10 people in a crew, so there's like probably 17, 18 of us working on this one roof. <laughs> well, one person stayed on the ground. I kind of wish they had their job. But yeah, we were up there and we were getting the shingles off. And once you get the shingles and the black tar paper off, it's easy to walk around because it's just flat out plywood on these old houses. So it didn't slip and fall, you know, after that, uh, thankfully. The first few hours were fine because we started work at like 7, 7.30 in the morning. So, you know, it, it was good to work during then because it's nice and cool. The problem is, after lunchtime, now this is this is in Franklin, North Carolina, and even though you're at high elevation, it's still the middle of summer, it got up to about 80, between 85, 87 degrees. Now, depending on where you live, you might say, oh, Bob, that's not that hot. It, it was hot. It was hot. I mean, this house was kind of like on top of a big hill on the side of a mountain. And there wasn't a whole lot of tree cover. I mean, in fact, a lot of the trees around this place have been cut down, so we had, like, zero shade. So, after we got back from lunch, we were just like... <gasps> you know, it was just hot! And we were on a roof, no shade, and... And, of course, we have these crew leaders. Now, the crew we were helping, they had their own crew leader, and they are telling us what to do and everything. And it got to the point where, you know, a lot of us were just standing around while he and the other guy with the nail gun were shooting the nails in, right? For like putting down the siding before you put the, the new shingles on. Oh, wow. It, I mean, 
15 people standing on a roof doing nothing, baking in the hot sun. And of course, this is the one day I didn't bring my suntan lotion. The one day, and my neck got burned. It wasn't that bad though. I was, I was just having a real tough time. You know, I'm just like, you know what? Yeah, I, I want to help people. I'm not gonna lie. I'm a lazy, I'm a lazy bum. I, <laughs> I know it sounds bad. You know, oh, but Bob, you go out there to help people and stuff and you're lazy. Yeah, I'm lazy. I mean, I'm, I like editing videos better than I like working on you know, rooftops or working people's houses, but you know, it's, it's for the loud. <sighs> I'm sorry, Lord. I, but actually the next day, Wednesday, we went to our official work site for my work crew because we were just helping that other group on Tuesday. So Wednesday was where we started, where we were supposed to go Tuesday and work. But it turns out it only took us like two days and a couple hours the last day on Friday to finish it up. Uh, first day, Wednesday, we tore off all the shingles of this, this house. It was a trailer converted into a house. And we tore all the old shingles off the tar paper. And the next day, we got all the shingles on there before we had to leave at 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock is usually when we're supposed to get done. So we got all that done, and everything was fine. You know, it's, it wasn't so bad. Oh, and thank God, this house we worked on, the second one, Wednesday through Friday, it was actually in the shade for most of the day. I mean, it was at a while, between 12 and 1, we got back from lunch, 1 o'clock, 1.20 or whatever, is when the sun finally started actually hitting the roof, which is great because the first four hours in the morning, four and a half hours, we could actually get a lot done. And it was awesome. I mean, it was like the end of the day, Thursday, we finished putting the shingles on and we were like, yes, day three, and we're almost done with this thing. A couple hours uh, Friday morning, we were done. After that, we did some prayer walking, uh, which is when you walk from house to house and you pray just outside of their property. I mean, you don't want to be not, like in their property necessarily because then they might be like, hey, get off my property, you know. You don't want, you, we're not here to try to bug people. We're just trying to help them, you know, whichever house we help out with, whichever person we help. Of course, they agree to it and everything. The, the organization tries its best not to, like, get in people's hair. You know, we just want to help out. And if they accept our help, then we, we help them. But the problem, that's, that's not the real problem, not the work part. The problem with this mission trip, I hate to say this, but it was the organization itself when it came to the schedule and where to be. We stayed in an old middle school, and this middle school, um, it, well, it, it's still in use. It's not like my first mission trip uh, a month ago, where it was an abandoned middle school. This middle school is still in operation, and they had the lunch ladies there, and some of the custodians from the school, you know, cleaning up, and the lunch ladies would fix us a meal for supper. Because the local church has fed us lunch. So yeah, the lunch ladies were there, and according to the schedule, it said dinner at 6 o'clock. It was 5.30. 5.30. The first work day, you know, we get, we get back and I'm just tired. And I said, okay, I'm hungry, you know, before I get a shower, because I was sweating like a pig, everyone was. We get back after four, because that first crew that we helped, they were, they wanted to stay, like, get a lot more done, which I understand, which is good. You know, you, you want to try to get as far as you can the first day to make the rest of the days easier. But we get back, like, after five. And I show up to the lunch line thinking, okay, dinner's at 6, I'm going to get in line early. It started at 5.30. All the signs, they had papers, these 8.5 by 11 sheets of paper all over the place, you know, near where you were staying, uh, in the cafeteria, you know, everything. And it said dinner at 6. Every day we were there, 5.30 is when the lunch lady started serving. So I guess someone didn't get the message. Let's see what else. Oh yeah, the gathering. The worship service usually is like 7.15 every evening. Once again, uh, the schedule is a schedule alone. It does not tell you where to go. Now, I mean, using some simple common sense, you'd know where to go. There's a cafeteria, there's the gym where we had all the tables, we had the worship service and everything. And they separated the boys and the girls. The boys were in uh, the seventh grade hall and I think the eighth grade hall areas, the, the girls, because, you know, it's good to separate that. They have this weird thing about purple, the color purple, where if a boy or a girl was seen holding hands or kissing or showing any romantic thing, they'd have a, a, the, this little, <laughs> the little swimming pool noodle things. And the boy and girl had to hold like a purple noodle or something. That didn't happen. I don't think, I don't know if it's ever happened in the history of this organization. It's just something to keep the kids from, you know, getting all smoochy kissy. <laughs> ah. 
But it would have been funny to see at least, you know, like so at least one rebel going against the rules. But that's just me. I'm, uh, I'm chaotic like that. But the best part of the whole trip, and this is kind of bad, but the showers. Now, back then in these old schools, the boy showers. I don't know if it's like at the new schools now, but they had the open shower thing for the men. Now they tried to separate it by having these ropes tied from the poles where the sprinklers came off of for the showers. They had ropes tied across and they put curtains, right? To try to make it private for each person. <laughs> they were transparent. The curtains were almost 100% transparent. So it didn't matter. <laughs> if someone is naked in the stall next to you, you can see it. And you know, I, it, to me, it's just awkward. You know, I guess it's just the way I grew up, but it's awkward. And, uh, of course, all the other young guys, they bought swimming trunks, you know. Uh, swimming. Uh, swimsuit, whatever. And that way they wouldn't have to shower butt naked. Of course, the, the old men, a lot of the church group leaders, old men, you know, 60 plus. Back in their day, when they were in the military or whatever, they would always shower butt naked with other guys. And it wasn't a big deal. You know, it wasn't a big deal back then, but now it kind of is. It just, it just, it's just awkward to me. And you got these 60 plus year old men walking in the showers, you know, they're in the locker room, they strip down to nothing and they walk in there. <laughs> the funny thing is every time an old man walk in there butt naked, you'd see three or four like young kids come out. They're not even done showering and they're just like, I have been scarred for life. You should have seen the looks on their faces, these these boys, these young boys, like eight, nine with some of the younger ones. Just the look of sheer terror when they saw those old naked men in the showers. They're just like... <laughs> oh, I don't know. I know. It's terrible. I'm sorry. I just... I just thought it was funny. You know? You, just, you know, you try to be a good person, but every now and then you see something where it terrifies a young child and you just delight in it. One kid actually did a parody of one of the worship songs that we sing during the church service part in the evening. He made a parody and it rhymes with the name of the organization. Uh, let's see, how did it go? <coughs> Taking showers with naked strangers. Don't drop the soap or you'll be in danger. Yeah. Okay, I, I think that kid deserves a medal personally. But <laughs> that, was, that was probably the best part of the trip right there. But yeah, as the days went on, it got easier. I, I know, I know I really shouldn't complain about this stuff, guys. I know, it's, because you're doing good work. You're helping these people that are less fortunate than yourself. But I'm just, I don't know if I'm gonna do this mission trip thing anymore. I'm just, I, I try to stay physically fit, but this construction deal is not good with me. I'm just, I'm not a very strong guy. I, I don't do very well at construction stuff. But you know, I wanna help people. You know, it's a thought that counts. But I, I'd kind of rather do YouTube, honestly, which is probably what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to try to keep going on this YouTube thing, guys. Uh, thanks, thank you guys for all your support. And uh, please continue to share and like my videos and everything. Or dislike them if you don't like them, you know. Everyone has an opinion, but that's fine. Hey, you know, you dislike it, it's YouTube. It's, it's YouTube. I've said that before. Personally, don't don't care if you dislike it. It just means that you need to get some positivity in here. I'm still working on the next praise video. I'm trying to work up to some stuff here. Once more, there's more drama going on on YouTube. But honestly, what's new?